Nectar ah, ah glory to God in the highest. How you guys doing? Hope you're doing okay. This is Sister Toffee, founder of the Comedic Science Channel, the Nectar Ruin You, Power of God's Nature in Your Spirit. God's nature is in your spirit. Just that, you know, it's not talked about. How you guys doing? I hope you're doing okay. This video is going to be just a, a very serious conversation. I joke around a lot to try to lighten up the energy. I joke around a lot because it's good for my energy. Um, balance is needed in life. You know, we have some very serious things going on in the world. And I hear a lot of people that I know voice it. Their discomfort with the uh, situations going on in the world, the conditions of the world. But the thing is, being upset about it is not going to change what it is. And fighting against it does not necessarily mean fighting in a physical form and using brute force or toxic masculine energy in order to combat it. The actual effective way of combating toxic masculinity is to operate in the polar opposite, which is the divine feminine energy. And this is what I'm talking about. Now in the lower nature, we assume in our human consciousness that an offense to toxic masculinity would be effective in a form of verbal or verbal rebuttal or um, even phys physical altercations, you know. There is a need for that at times. There are times where you have to stand your ground. There are times that you have to move into toxic energy, but it's necessary because you have to sometimes deal with uh, malevolent forces that, you know, are not easily persuaded to leave you alone. And so you have to move into a form of negative energy, toxic energy, devilish energy. And, uh, but it's not all the time. It's not necessary all the time. Wisdom can be used to effectively deal with toxic masculinity. Okay? I'm gonna repeat that. Wisdom can be used to deal with toxic masculinity. Um, this video is going to be about toxic masculinity and how it manifests, how it's created, and how we project toxic, mas toxic masculinity as human beings. That's right, male and female. We both exert toxic masculinity at times. So uh, I don't have anything written down. I'm not going to write anything down. Uh, however, there is one scripture that is coming to mind when I think about toxic masculinity and what it is and how to deal with it effectively. So the scripture that's coming to mind, mine is the scripture that's uh, in the King James Version Bible that says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. So I'm going to look that up right now. Just give me a second. I hope you guys are doing okay. One second. I'm going to look it up on Google. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. KJV. According to less than B greater than King James Bible, less than B greater than online. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 KJV Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Alright, you guys heard that from Google. Thank you Google, I appreciate it. So Ephesians 5, 25 through 33, okay? I'm going to read it now. This is from Bible Gateway, 525. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 through 33. The reason why I use the King James Version Bible, a lot of people that are evolving, knowing that 
Jesus was the name of a slave ship that many of my ancestors were brought over to Americas in. And so they abhorred the name Jesus. And so they Im immediately assumed that there is no Christ because the name Jesus was on the boat that we were shipped over here to become enslaved and suffered over 400 plus years. Okay. The only thing I can say is I know for a fact that there was a master consciousness energy that's embodied many people. I know that master energy as life. I know that master energy as the sun, the life force that gives the universe and the planet and us everything that we need to survive on planet Earth. So I see the Christed energy or the master energy as the life force. Okay? The four forces of nature. Strong force, weak force, gravity, and electromagnetism. Okay? And those energies have a consciousness. And I see that as the embodiment of the unification of Father, Mother, God. Masculine, feminine polarities of the thing or the being that has created us. The intelligence that cannot be contested, that's created all things, that will return everything it's created back to itself. So, I have a very scientific approach to spirituality, religion. I don't know what most of you see it as, but I bring things down to the lowest common understanding, which is science. So, I've turned spiritual knowledge or religion into science, and that's what this channel is all about. The ancient Egyptian spiritual science of Metu Neter, or Metu Unter, or the divine word of God, is the interpretation of the Neteru, the faculties of manifestation that is within your spirit. That's not studied. And I consider that the mind of Christ and how it operates. And it lives in all of us. So this is going to be a more serious video. I like to play around and joke around, but I have a very serious side. You're going to see that side in this video. So it reads Ephesians 5, 25 through 33. And the reason why, again, I read the King James Version Bible is because it is useful. It's a codified book. It's a codified. It's a cold book. You're not to read the Bible verbatim. You're supposed to look at it as a riddle. That's why I read it. Because everything you need to know is hidden in it. But you need the spirit of Tehuti to measure divine wisdom, the third eye pineal gland, to be able to interpret it properly. Or more in depth. Okay, where it doesn't sound like a fairy tale or Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack, Jack jumped over the candlestick. Okay, this is the way that your mind can use the intellect, sphere A, Gemini energy, Sebek, Sebeku, to give a deeper understanding of exactly what the text is saying so you can apply it to real life situations. Okay? It's basically exercising your spiritual muscles, the God within yourself. You know, it's, it's teaching you how to operate in that universal mind as a God. So that's what the science is about. Now, the scripture I read gives a simplified expression of what they tell me my guides talk to me and they give me scriptures and I interpret it from using the sphere uh, 8 Sebek or Sebeku and then I filter it back through divine wisdom Tehuti, third eye to measure okay, the eye of Ra so husbands love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it now let's talk about husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Today's the 23rd. The 25th will be on Friday. I'm sorry, today's the 24th. Tomorrow will be the 25th, I believe. Husbands love your wives. Excuse the, uh, the, uh, the noise outside. Husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now this particular uh, verse to me says... A husband man is someone that is a protector, a provider, and uh, commit and, and is committed to his family. Okay, you can see a business as a family, a business uh, constituents as family members. You can see, um, you know, people in the military can see their uh, platoon or their troop or their tro their their troop as a a family. Uh, people that work in the spiritual community, you have people you work with, you can look at yourself as a family. You know, a corporation's board of directors can see themselves as a bit as a family. You know, we can put this in a lot of different scenarios. So when it says husband love your wives, your wife would be the goal. 
okay? The purpose that you are cultivating in order to reach a common agreed outcome together. So the wife would be the, the uh, intended goal. The husband is any person or persons that have made a, a commitment to stay dedicated to this goal or this outcome, okay? So let's look at this in a metaphoric way. Let's not look at this verbatim, okay? So husbands, people that are dedicated to a person, place, thing, or group, or, pur or purpose, love your wives, love that idea, project, okay? Even as Christ loved the church, meaning get, give your life for it. Christ is considered the spirit of life. Love the church, the organization, and gave himself for it. In other words, you dedicate your you dedicate your life to it. Okay, get committed. Basically, is what that's saying. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing by the water of the word. That's basically verbally agreeing that you have one mission statement, one objective in that group, in that business, in that family, in that unit. You have one goal. You all have the same goal in mind, and you work towards the goal together. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, okay, a glorious organization, okay, project or group, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Basically continuing until you perfect the thing. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies, and who he that loves his wife also loves himself, okay. I'm speaking of this in a term, in, in worldly terms, because I want you guys to understand that all work is an edification for the divinity within you, which is a tribute to the creator that's made us, the universe, whatever you want to call God. Okay, it still honors the divine or the creator of our existence when we work efficiently, regardless to what you call God. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loves himself. Love your goal. Love your objective. Love what you're doing as you love yourself. See yourself as one with it. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourish it and cherish it, even as the Lord church, as, as the Lord the church. Okay? Meaning, don't just talk about it, be about it. And this definitely speaks to me. For we are members of his body, okay, just like a group of people are mem members of one organization, you know, a corporation has board of directors, you know, all of them make up one body, an entity, right? For we are members of his body, of his flesh and his bones, okay? So each person has a particular role to play, and they make up one body, which makes it efficient movement as a unit. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. To me, this means that you lose, you leave your quote unquote, quote unquote, the uh, family um, ideal, and you move out in your divine purpose, because a lot of times family, family, most times are focused on a mundane perspective and not building a legacy. I'm not saying all families are like that, but regular, typical, common families, they're not thinking about building legacy. Some families are. Legacy is becoming something more common. However, there are still a lot of unhealthy dynamics in, in the building of the legacy, which is toxic masculinity, which is what this video is going to be all about. Okay, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, his project, or whatever he's focused on, and they shall become one flesh. You stay dedicated. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ in the church, or life and what you're dedicated to. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife sees that she reverence her husband. In other words, everyone in that particular group, body, uh, team, have to work together in order to have success. You know, so the husband would be your position your delegated responsibilities, and the wife would be the work that needs to be done, the cultivation that needs to happen, just like 
when a farmer plants a seed, when the water hits it and the sun hits that seed and that soil, the cultivation process is moving behind the scenes by the hands of the divine. Well, now you're the hands of the divine working in this project that you're doing. So you need to reverence your position, honor it, respect it, do the work, and see it to fruition, okay? Now, that was the aspect in reference to seeing it as a mundane, earthly work. Now I'm going to talk about it regarding an actual relationship. Generally speaking, this is actually the template in which God wanted men and women to operate, okay? Um, on a parabolic level, in the form of an analogy, men are seeds, or a masculine energy is a seed, and it represents the potential of a thing, an idea, okay? The action in the idea to bring to fruition what it is that's desired, that's the feminine energy, okay? The passion and the desire is the feminine energy. The action to move forward and to do it is the masculine energy. We're all working in masculine and feminine energy, whether we're male or female. And what I want to help you guys understand is to be cognizant of when you're using feminine and masculine energy. When you're in meditation, you're in feminine energy, male or female. When you're emotional, you're in feminine energy. When you are concerned about another person, you're in feminine energy. When you are wanting to nourish something, even yourself, eat better, take better care of your body. I'm not talking about the action of it. I'm talking about the intention and the desire of it. That is feminine energy. So what I'm trying to do is get men and women to start to understand when they are operate, operating in the father energy and in the mother energy of a God within self. Okay. The action, and the, act, the action and the acting of it, that's the life force. That's the movement. Okay, so we're all operating in this father, mother, master energy all the time. We're just unaware of it, okay? Now, I hope you guys look up this scripture, Ephesians 5, verses 25 through 33, because it really does give an example of how we're supposed to be towards our relationships and for the, for the things that we're dedicated to. But I'm going to reference now how it relates to relationships. Okay? Clearly here in this, in this uh, excerpt, it says for men to give themselves to the wife. Okay? Now, this is in the case of you having a divine feminine. Okay? Many women are not divine feminine. Okay? And this is not a judgment on the women. And this is because they have been taught to be something other than Divine Feminine. How do I know? I have been other than Divine Feminine. Yes, Sister Toffee has been other than Divine Feminine. How did it happen? It happened because of toxic masculinity. I didn't. When I was in uh, non-Divine Feminine energy, meaning feminine but not divine, meaning not in alignment with the universe, that was because I was abused. Yeah, Sister Toffee was actually sexually abused, many times in life yeah emotionally abused verbally abused and so it happened to be a repetitive pattern because when I was young I didn't have a male father around to protect me so I had to deal with a lot of trials in life on my own without that male protection and therefore I became a victim of a lot of different situations because I was completely unaware of the proper character of men. I knew what I didn't want, but I didn't know exactly what they should act like. I had an idea because I have this wonderful man here. Excuse me. I have this wonderful man here as an example, my mother's father. Without him showing me the love that he showed me, I would have had no idea at all how men should act. Now this man had 12 children. He provided for all of them. They were never homeless. He uh, actually had a, in a, you know, in the times where, you know, quote unquote, you know, we were just not too long coming out of slavery. This man happened to have a three story house with a basement to take care of his children. And he had a wife that stayed dedicated with him. They were the epitome of this scripture. Okay. So although I didn't have 
my biological father in my life, I had an example because I was able, my mother sent me and my siblings to see them every summer when I was a youth. So being able to have that experience and time with him gave me some idea that I could, you know, reference and look back on and understand what it may look like. Okay. I didn't have enough knowledge to know the function daily, but I did have an idea. But at a young age, I knew not to, I didn't know to use my experience with my grandfather as a reference, okay? Because there was no men in my family. There were no males. There were no men, period. There were no men in my childhood when I grew up at all. Only women and children. No men. And so the lack of having a divine masculine in a family can cause a lot of dysfunction in the home, okay? Number one, the women end up having to become the masculine and the feminine, a father and a mother, which get, pr brings them into di an imbalance. And this imbalance creates a toxic masculine energy inside of the feminine. And so a lot of women end up ruling or their households or running their households or even raising their children in toxic masculinity. And why is that happening? It's because there is no divine masculine present in the home. Now, without this balance of the opposite polarity, which is the nature in which we're made, Heavenly Father energy, Heavenly Mother energy, divine masculine, divine feminine, okay? Logic, creativity, strength, and passivity, you know, uh, force and receptivity. These opposite polarities not being present, protection and the one that needs to be protected, the seed and the soil, okay? The potential and the environment in which the potential can be transformed into something that brings life and continues to bring fruit if it's properly taken care of and that's the woman the woman is an entity that represents soil soil is the ground in which everything that we need to sustain our bodies is needed to place uh, seeds into so that we can have the sustenance that we need the elements of fire water air and earth provide the nutrients or bring out the nutrients in the soil to provide the life that needs to be given to that plant or that seed for it to continue to grow. Okay, whether it's an apple tree, peach tree, fig tree, whatever it is. Tomato tree, doesn't matter. This is the process of life. Men are the seed. The women are the potential of that seed being manifested. The environment in which that seed can be manifested. So I need for whoever's watching this video to stop looking at these outer superficial perspectives uh, perspectives of feminine and masculine okay because they are incorrect and inappropriate okay divine femininity and masculinity is a science and it needs to be understood deeply and thoroughly that's what this science of the natural rule is all about you understanding those masculine and feminine polarities and operatives within yourself and this is the natural rule okay the ancient egyptian tree of life okay there are feminine and masculine powers of manifestation that operate within all of us regardless to what form of body in you you're in whether you have a, a you know whether you have a female re reproductive system or a masculine it doesn't matter we are moving in and out of both energies but because there's no awareness of the operatives of them we have toxic masculinity going on men are walking around they don't know who they are what they are how they're made why they're here and what they're supposed to be doing they don't know and this is what's causing toxic masculinity because there's this undercurrent of this foolishness of this gorilla nature of this over aggressive nature of men that is completely outside of divine will you just saw that in Ephesians, Ephesians 5 okay we are not operating in the divine template okay men have been taught that it is okay through subliminal programming to be a toxic masculine okay and they are completely outside of the divine will of Father God. The one they're supposed to be a reflection of. Okay? This is the mastery of self for the masculines. What did it say? To give themselves for it. Okay? The seed submerges itself in the soil. So that it can bring out the potential of itself. Okay, the potential of itself, the God within itself, cannot come forward without him, himself being implanted into the soil. Okay, now let's get sex out of your mind. 
This has nothing to do with the physical part of sexual activity. This has to do with the man providing wisdom for the divine feminine. It is supposed to start as a father. The father has a responsibility of, in, of injecting his wisdom into the children, male and female, boy and girl. Men are not teaching their children what it is to be a manifestation of God in feminine and masculine form. Why? Because they don't know what they are. How can you teach your children something you don't even know about yourself? That's why I'm here. I have a lot of people that don't like me because they think that I'm trying to look like someone important. Not to get all into my story, but Sister Toffee has had no silver spoon. Okay? <laughs> everything I have learned in life, everything I have gained in life, I have learned through pain, most of it. Minus my Auntie Flora. She showed me kindness without expectation and I've had other people in my life beautiful friends of mine Charles Michael uh, Kathy rest in peace uh, Kimberly I've had a lot of good friends that showed me love just because these are the people I consider connected to the divine feminine and masculine energy within themselves they know what it is to be a god because they live in it, okay? They may not have learned the science, but they would they'll be they'll tap into it very easily without a problem. I'm going to light some sage really quick, you guys. Cuz uh while I'm always while I'm teaching, I'm always dealing with malevolent forces. Just so you guys know, people like myself and other light workers, okay? Light worker is just someone that is willing to expose the devil. Meaning meaning See, a lot of people don't understand the devil has two purposes. Actually, three. One, to deceive you. And two, to teach you how to not be deceived. And three, to master that area in which you've been tested. Okay? The devil is, the devil is purposeful. Let me let you guys know something. The devil is purposeful. Okay? We are here to be tested. Make no mistake. I laugh and I joke, but I do that to lighten the energy and transmute energy in the planet because we have too many people in the lower animal nature, meaning uncontrolled self. Okay? They have no mastery of self. There are too many people that do not have mastery of self. So I hold light energy, meaning joy, happiness, and all that other fun stuff, in order to bring more of that higher power, higher vibration energy into the world just so I can be comfortable and just so people like me okay empaths and sentients can live in a comfortable etheric environment because there's always people around you for instance there's a man around here now that's very unhappy I can hear him banging on something you know making noise because he's an unhappy person and why is he unhappy it's either one he's either a born devil you do have born devils and then you have two made devils and then three, you have people that choose to be a devil, okay? They want revenge for the wrong that's been done. And instead of them understanding, we're deal dealing with a larger template of dealing with universal imbalance and toxicity that has ran its course and stepped over boundaries and jurisdictions that are not in their domicile. And it needs to be restructured re, uh, by the divine masculine and feminine that are in flesh that are here okay we are the ones that are supposed to be the gods to bring the balance and the order back okay but until we understand what toxic masculinity and toxic uh, femininity is I want to talk about both of them we will never be able to have the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to level up and become the god within self okay um what I want you men to know is that this favorable disposition of you being the head has been abused. You have abused your authority. Not all of you. There are some that are divine masculine in nature and they do exactly what that scripture said. They protect the divine feminine. Okay? 
But those of you that do not protect the divine feminine, but that prey on divine feminine and that try to put fear in divine feminine. Let me see if I can find Kali. Let me show you who's coming for you. You guys are going to trip. Oh, Toffee's opposite polarities. You know, I try to laugh and joke because I don't like you guys to see my other side. I'm very in touch with what you call the dark and the light or the God and the devil. It's in everybody, okay? But I don't glorify it, okay? Because, see, when I get in touch with the dark side, I'm ready for Armageddon. And I get tired of dealing with that energy because I don't want to play. I want to destroy it, okay? Now, let me show you about Kali, the destroyer. See, you need to be aware of your devil. You need to let him know you know he's there. But I don't know how many ba uh, battles the divine wants me to fight. And if I do what, I, what, my, what my Kali side wants to do, I won't be here anymore. Let's just say that. I don't play when it comes to war. Kali Ma. Okay? She represents many things. Killing the divine. I mean, killing uh, toxic masculinity. She represents killing in balance outside and inside of the self. She's a daughter of Ra. She's no joke. She represents Sekhmet. In the ancient Egyptian, Sekhmet is the uh, lion-headed goddess. Or the red lady. And why is she red? She's red because of the blood bloodshed. See, this is what's happening to the divine feminine. Let me tell you what you men are doing out there. You toxic masculines that think all this guerrilla aggression and toxic masculinity is okay. This is what you're turning your women into. Okay? Okay, Sekhmet had to be tricked into becoming docile because she was so angry about toxic masculinity, all she wanted to do was kill. So all she wanted to do was kill anybody in the male form. And what you guys are doing, you guys are resurrecting Kali. Kali was on my phone about a month ago. She's making her, 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 her presence known. And just uh, some of you out there that work in the dark, I watch you. Those of you that uh, embrace Baphomet, I watch you. Like Brother Panic, I watch him. I resonate with some of the things he says and some of it I do not. That's my choice. Okay? There are things I agree with him on. There's things I do not agree with him on. Okay? I still believe that he uh, has more levels of uh, transmutation to do, elevating his consciousness. But he does have the understanding of uh, what this life is all about. And it's all about not having to come back, mastering the self. He is into self-mastery, okay? Um, I personally resonate more with uh, Sadhguru. Uh, who else? Um... I like Mind Valley. Uh, who else do I like? I do like I, I like Oprah. I like Red Table Talk. Um, I like a lot of tarot re readers. I told you guys, uh, there's, I think uh, these tarot readers are just, they're just super awesome. They're like lightning and fire. I mean, shout out to the YouTube tarot community because there's some really bad, uh, not bad meaning bad, but awesome tarot readers that, if you're serious about changing your life, the divine is using these tarot readers to help people on an individual level, okay? And they're not um, they're not singing or preaching. They're just speaking to you on a mundane, human-to-human -human level, okay? So uh, if you guys are interested in knowing which tarot readers I enjoy, email me at selfmastery at kmsc.online. So I want to talk about this toxic masculinity. What's happening is Men are not healed. See, men have been taught to be outside of their nature because that's what's been ruling the world. And um, because men have been focused on mundane and earthly pursuits. Okay? They're focused on power in the earth as opposed to power in the spirit. This is the problem. 
Okay? This is what makes them toxic. Because they believe that riches and glory has to do with physical, you know, with conquer, conquering physically. But they have no, absolutely no power over the spirit. Okay? If you have power on the physical level, but you have no power within yourself as a spirit, and all you can do is get mad about what goes on around you, but you don't have any understanding of the root causes of it, and no wisdom as to how to properly deal with it effectively, where you can first make change in yourself and then outside around the people that are in your environment, then you are not on the path of self-mastery, okay? We are dual beings. We're not just physical. We're spiritual as well. And the first mastery is within the self, okay? So you can have all that you want monetarily, but if you don't take time to study why what number one has happened to you has happened to you, okay? What was wrong with the people around you that made them affect you the way that they affected you, okay? Then studying the history what, as to what made the people that hurt you made, make, you know, made them that way, what, what history happened to make the people that hurt you hurt you the way they hurt you. You're not doing the work. You're not doing the shadow work. I don't respect men that don't do shadow work. See, your shadow work is killing your ego, edging God out, okay? You can't own this body and live in the power as a God, as a representation of the strongest force in this world without acknowledging the composition of it or the source of it. And that's what a lot of you men are doing. You guys take more time worrying about earthly pursuits and earthly power instead of understanding that you must honor the divine feminine in order to become a divine masculine. And if you do not, this energy is coming for you. Kali. Kali's mad. You guys need to get it together because Kali, she was on my phone last week. And I watched a video from Brother Panic. And he showed up with her in his uh in his uh lecture. See, you guys gotta understand. God is both masculine and feminine. God is not just a male force. It's also feminine. Strong force, weak force. In my prior video, I shared with you the powers of nature. I'm going to do it again so you can see it. The four powers of nature. According to Clear IAS, the four fundamental forces of nature are gravitational force, weak nuclear force, electromagnetic force, and strong nuclear force. The weak and strong forces are effective only over a very short range and dominate only at the level of subatomic particles. The point is... The point is... These four forces make up life. Okay, I'm going to assume that strong force represents the masculine energy. Weak force represents the feminine energy. And electromagnetism and gravity are the energies that hold them together. Okay, four quadrants of the Godhead energy. Okay, you can't see it now, but you can look that up on Google. We have got to get into balance, okay? This idea of feminine being something to be conquered has to stop, okay? The feminine has to be cultivated, okay? Just like your, just like your, um, your intuition has to be cultivated, okay? Intuition has to be cultivated. That's a feminine energy, okay? Your senses, your ability to sense things, when something's happening, when something's coming. What someone might be up to, what they're going to do. Your senses, that is a feminine energy, okay? 
that energy Bruce Lee was using before he would, when he would stay blindfolded, he would fight with blindfold or the, or the, or the uh, you know, ancient uh, karate masters would do and they'd have a blindfold over them and they'd wait and listen. That's a feminine energy. When you deal with the inner intuitive nature, you're dealing with the feminine. Okay? Masculine. Okay? You cannot run from the feminine. The feminine is in you. The, the feminine came out of you. Okay? And women have the ability to move into the masculine energy. Okay? When a woman gives life to a child, that movement of that child, that coming forth of that child, that's a masculine energy. And no man could, could ever do that, give birth to a child. Okay? Women being able to, to sustain the family when fathers walk away, that's masculine energy. You know? You have some women that are so angry or just got so disgusted with divine masculine, I'm sorry, toxic masculine experiences in life, they have become bodybuilders, weight weightlifters. Um, some of them are, um, some of them choose to be with other women because of the toxic masculine experiences. Now, let's talk about broken families and how toxic masculinity contributes to broken families. When women are mistreated by men or used and the man plants his seed inside the woman, the child comes forth and he walks away and leaves the child with the mother to raise the child on, the own, on, her, on, on her own and the man is not present to teach, number one, okay? To teach. You already saw in that scripture in Ephesians 5, men are supposed to give themselves for, Okay? The church is an organization, and the man's first organization is his family. Okay? Now, if you, by some reason, have chosen a woman that is not connected to her divine feminine, my heart goes out to you, because that means you're dealing with a contentious woman. And she's horrible, because it says a contentious woman is like a continuous dripping. Okay? This means that she's been affected by toxic masculinity. I guarantee you, every woman that you have met, that is a quote unquote what you guys call a B or whatever. She has been affected by toxic masculinity. Some male in her life has either abandoned her, abused her, misused her, okay, oppressed her, sabotaged her, something destructive. This is this toxic masculine energy. So what happens is when he leaves and he hurts her and abandons her, if she doesn't have connection to the divine feminine, She's going to move into toxic masculinity. She may become a Jezebel. She may become someone that will hurt men uh, through manipulation. Okay. Toxic masculinity does not dissolve. It only transfers. Do you get it? Okay. Even when the woman is being cruel and evil and hurtful towards her children or to her man or boyfriend, or whatever. When women are acting a fool... Just because she's in feminine energy doesn't mean that she's a toxic feminine. She's a toxic masculine. Okay, so bleep, just understand this. Believe me when I say to you. Toxic masculinity is the cause, number one, of the problems in the earth. Okay? Male consciousness without understanding of its powers. How it operates and what it's supposed to be doing to be effective. Okay? Now, I'll also iterate on this. Many men are in toxic masculinity because they have not healed from trauma themselves. Whether their father wasn't in their life, whether they were abused, many men have been sexually abused and they have not found resolve over that and they are extremely angry. So there we go again with toxic masculinity. Men that violate other men. This is another form of toxic masculinity. Where men either, not to say that being a gay man is a problem, I'm no one's judge. I personally chose not to be with anyone because sexual energy itself scares the hell out of me now. I'm not even interested in any sexual relations whatsoever. That's Sister Toffee though. But for those of you that choose to have a sexual union... I pray 
that both of you begin to understand what toxic masculinity is. Okay? A toxic feminine cannot be a toxic feminine because she's the she is the motherboard. All she can do is get programmed. Just like a seed, the seed has the potential, has the content, the structure, the wisdom, the divine intelligence of what it's supposed to be. If there's a peak seed, that seed has a masculine composition. Okay? The potentate, the potential, okay? The sperm, or so to speak, the soul of a thing. And it's placed inside of the soil. The soil is only the environment in which what's in the seed can come forth, okay? There is no such thing as a toxic feminine. There's only toxic masculinity. And it can be operative in a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. So we have to really start to understand toxic masculinity and what it's doing to our planet, to our lives, to our earth, to our family. It doesn't die. It only transfers. We need to transmute it now. Through wisdom, through understanding, through identif identification, knowing what it is, how it operates, when it's present, and where it's trying to hit us. What it's trying to do to us, okay? And what do I believe about toxic masculinity? I believe that it is controlled by a malevolent force, okay? Many people don't believe in fallen angels. I do. They're real, just like holy angels are real, okay? You have divine ancestors of the light, and you have ancestors of the darkness. Those are the, for the good, and those are for the evil, both worlds are alive. The spirit world and the physical world are alive. Okay? In my other video that I uploaded today about the ancestors talking, they're here. And not all of them are good. So you have to invoke protection over yourself when you want to connect with the ancestors so you can see through the veil. Because this whole world is an illusion. It's a test for you to connect to your spiritual powers. Okay? No matter how strong you are, until you get control over the toxic masculinity inside of yourself, including Sister Toffee, you will not become the master of self, the Osair, the all seer. Okay? Crown chakra lit up, connected to the divine. Third chakra open. You can't fool me. Okay? I'm feeling spirit right now. Very heavily. So I want you guys to know. Toxic masculinity is the cause of destruction in our 3D realm. And it's initiated by a malevolent force, a demonic entity. Okay? We need to become aware of what this toxic masculinity is. It jumps from generation to generation to generation to generation. Okay? How does that demonic entity come in? Through thoughts, suggestions, and ideas. And where does it embody itself? Through other people. So, your biggest enemy can be the person standing right next to you. The person that's in your household. Because it's not the flesh that's the problem. It's the operating system inside of the person. The OS in the person. There's two operating systems. A benefic system, a malevolent system, a divine system, and a destructive system. If it's bringing pain, harm, loss, oppression, sabotage, manipulation, deceit, it's a malevolent force. Malevolent forces will continue to try until you're willing to die to let them know I'm not with you. And sometimes... You may have to make a decision whether you're going to die that day or not. Because they will keep trying you. They may not care about the consequences of your actions. Maybe they have another host they can jump inside of. But they will test you to see if you're really about this business. They will test you to see if you're really willing to die for what you say. Now me, I've been attacked by malevolent forces before I even came out of my mother's womb. I've been attacked by malevolent forces in my blood family. 
today, June 25th or 24th, 2021, I stand alone in the physical realm. But oh, I got so many angelic powers with me, and I know it. So am I worried? No. Am I angry? Absolutely not. I wish my family members well, and I love them dearly. But they have failed to show me compassion because they don't have the ability to. You want to know why? Because they have no knowledge of self. They have no idea of what this spirit being is composed of, how it operates. They just read the Bible as a story. And figure it doesn't apply to me. This happened years and years and years ago. It's not happening now. Yes, it is. This science that I have been blessed to be enlightened on, that the ancestors of ancient Egypt gave us a long time ago, will make you aware of how these beings can enter into your consciousness through thoughts, ideas, suggestions, and can actually dock themselves in your body, in mind and spirit, just like this coronavirus can dock itself in people or whatever kind of virus. It'll dock itself in there and all of a sudden it start taking over everything. Same thing that the malevolence do, the fallen angels. So if you are not solid in your identity of who you are, what you are, why you're here, how you're made, and if you're not willing to die for what you believe in, you will be fooled for the malevolence. The problem, again, I will tell you, is toxic masculinity. There is no such thing as toxic femininity. The seal, the soil can only bring forth what the seed has put in it. So if you have seen or have felt or experienced a toxic feminine, you need to blame a toxic masculine source. Okay? There is no such thing as toxic femininity. Okay? Men carry the seed. The seed of toxic masculinity is from a masculine source. If you have seen a Cruella de Vil walking in flesh, she has been affected and infected by a toxic masculine. For all of my feminines out there, my divine feminines, you can transmute the energy of toxic masculinity. You can move back into your divine feminine energy so that we can shift this balance and bring that divine mother energy which we need back into the earth because they have been, when I say they, I'm talking about the malevolent forces, whoever they may be. They have been bringing in too much toxic masculine energy that is infecting the divine feminine. It's altering her natural nature, which is nurturing, loving, okay? And brings out the potential of all that is put inside of her. Women are losing their natural nature because toxic masculinity is reigning. Men, you need to sit down and have a serious talk with self and God. And ask yourself, why have you been allowing this foolishness to continue? This overly toxic, deceptive nature that's been going on in these so-called man caves... Why have you allowed that? And you call yourself a divine masculine. You need to be bold enough to stop being a boy and let these men know, I don't roll like that, brother. I'm a divine masculine. I protect women. I don't harm them. They don't have anything I need. I'm a God. I operate in the same fashion that I and made in the image of. I don't need to hurt a woman or overpower a woman to be a man. Okay? She needs me. I don't need her. She needs me to protect her. I don't have to hurt her. And if I'm not going to help her, I'm not going to bother her at all. Okay? All you men out there that are being toxic masculines, degrading women, laughing about it, you're a boy. You need to grow up you need to man up and you need to get your divine masculine energy and consciousness all the way up to the universal consciousness. Okay? You're weak and you're slipping. And I, that, that means you're a boy. I don't deal with boys. Because see, when I get toxic masculines around me that want to play games, you want to know what I do? Let me tell you about African-American women. They call it abuse. 
But see, we got whipped worse by our slave masters than our mothers ever did whooping us with an extension cord. Yeah, Sister Toffee got whooped with extension cords. I didn't get my skin ripped or nothing. Okay? She didn't chain me up and shackle me and put something around my neck of metal and tie me up to, you know, a chain gang. She did what she had to do to make sure that I knew the difference between right and wrong. That's what my mother did for me. Okay? That's the difference between how black women raise their children and other races raise their children. Okay? Black women have had too much on their shoulders to be dealing with foolishness from any child. Okay? Too much. We've been mother and father for too long. So, the first thing I want to tell you masculines out there. If you have a toxic feminine that's been in your life. Sister, mother, cousin, wife, friend, whatever. I want you to understand. Whatever defect you see in her is a cause of toxic masculinity. And let me tell you about what happens when women become infected with toxic, toxic masculinity. They become abandoned. Okay? The toxic masculines in, infect them with their toxic masculinity and their insecurities through abuse of many forms. And they leave them to die. And why are men doing that? Many African American men are doing it because their power to be a father, their power to be given the equal opportunity to be a, a true man, to have the skills, the resources, in order they, to properly take care of their family was taken away from them. And they've had to result to drugs and uh, you know whatever else is put out there as an opportunity for them to become financially secure. Whether it means wearing your pants off your butt and putting ta you know, tattoos all over your face and your neck and everything else. Because that looks like success in this world. So they want that success. Whatever it takes to win, to rule. So they gravitate to whatever they think is a position of power in this dimension. Okay? So we have to understand these things. We have to understand the why, the who, what, when, where, why, how. And after understanding, you have to say to yourself, will I be courageous enough to stand up for what I believe in? Because the best man that you could be is a man that's honest with yourself. A man that doesn't allow external things like culture or other people's opinions to rule what he wants for his life. If you allow other people to tell you the value of something or someone in your life, you are a child still. I don't care what you look like. I don't care how many mu muscles you got. I don't care if you can. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you can lift 500 pounds off your shoulders. A man defines himself and his own belief system for himself. Okay, a divine masculine man does that and so does a divine feminine woman. And until you define yourself for yourself, and until you learn this game of life, and until you learn that the game is not sold, it's not told, it's played. You better learn the rules of the game and you play at your own advantage. And you don't play underhandedly. You play according to the science of spirit. Because if you do it God's way, God will have your back. Okay? Spirit, I promise you will have your back. Mother God will have your back. Father God will have your back. The master will have your back. The ascended masters will have your back. Your ascended ancestors will have your back. Those of the light and the will and the law of God that will bless you. It will be a long and hard and arduous road, which is the road that I'm traveling. The, the road less travel. But it takes courage. It takes you being able to know people will hate you. It, people will not like you. People will, you know, project libel. Defamation of your character. Because they are insecure with who they are. So this Toffee is a very nice person, a very loving person. I was a very, very giving person in my past life. That old me is dead. I'm a new woman today. And I've had to separate myself from people that I loved because they kept projecting this old way of seeing me onto me. And I talked until I was blue in the face and I finally said, I can't do it. I'm not doing it anymore. I had to cut them off. 
My trust is in the divine. I know the divine is going to bring me through. And I know the victory will be mine and my heavenly father, mother, God, and the master. And I'm rolling all the way to the end in this thing. My question to you is this. Will you work with me to bring harmony and balance within the fabric of humanity? Will you work with me to bring balance to the divine feminine manifestations of Mother Earth and the Cosmic Mother, who is all of our mothers? Will you honor your Heavenly Mother, the universe? This is her womb right here. She's not happy. She's not happy. This toxic masculinity has gone on for too long, and it's got to stop. It's time for you masculines out there to read Ephesians 5 and pray for understanding on what that is and how you need to become that. Okay? So, you want to see a change in the women? Stop being toxic masculines. Period. Because if you don't, I done showed you Kali Ma. Segment. That's another side of the Divine Feminine Mother. And what y'all doing is summoning her forth. You keep playing, thinking she play she ain't playing with y'all. Okay, you know how the tsunamis happen? Remember when Noah in the ark? Yeah, that water. That's mama. You keep playing with her. We gonna all be in trouble. Honey, they will wipe us all out and start a whole new earth. Y'all masculines better get it together. You wanna talk about it? I love you. But you're not gonna get away with no foolishness around me. You understand? I don't care if you're male or female. Okay? Anytime you're acting crazy and out of control, that is toxic masculinity, whether you are a male or female. We got to stop this. I'm here to help. I love you. But you got to stop being a child. It's time to grow up. Time to level up. And become the God within self. Spiritual evolutionary levels and frequencies of becoming the God. All right? Remember this game of life is a test. The game is not told, the game is not sold, the game is played. And you need to learn the rules, which is the spiritual rules of this universe and manifestation, and play it at your advantage according to your chart, okay? To your advantage, not to hurt another person, but an advantage with the divine by following divine law, using divine wisdom and divine intelligence to move forward. In the divine will of God. Using your creative power. Talking to the ancestors. Sphere 3. And moving forward and giving birth. Sphere 9 all set. And manifesting it into sphere 10. The earth realm. Your soul contract. Your purpose for being here. You can do it and I believe in you. I'm doing it. If you'd like to support this channel. You can do so at paypal.me forward slash T-H-E-N-T-R-U-N-U at gmail.com. Or you can also choose the Cash App at Cash Sign. A-U-S-E-T, I mean capital A, lowercase U-S-E-T, capital T-H-E, capital G, lowercase zero, oh, I'm sorry. It's a Cash App, I'll set the goddess, okay? Cash Sign, capital A, lowercase U-S-E-T, capital T, lowercase H-E, capital G, lowercase O double D E double S. Okay? This is Sister Toffee. I love you. But see, a lot of people don't like this love. I got that old school mother love. I'm a little woman, but I got that old school love. I want to see you become the best you. I'm not going for no foolishness. Now, if you like tough love, come on my way. Because I'm going to celebrate with you. And when I see your victory, I'm going to cry. Don't think that I'm perfect. No one is. But we are moving forward into perfection. As we learn and grow and understand what's happened to our ancestors. And what's happened to us as a result of divine masculine energy being removed. And toxic masculine masculinity taken over. Okay? That means Ephesians 5 turned backwards. We need Ephesians 5 turned up right. Okay? This is the this is the plan of the divine. Get tired.
If we don't get this right, I'm telling you, we are in trouble. God bless you. Your ancestors bless you. Ascended masters bless you. I love you. I love all y'all. I just want to see us become the best we can be. We can do this together. I believe in you. You break my heart a million times over and over. And then I run into somebody that's doing the work and my hope gets reignited. These two cards fell out when I was uh, doing the last reading. So uh, from urbanintellectuals.com. I forgot to put that one down. I'll put it in this one. Black History Flashcards. We've got a card here from the Olmex. They're coming uh, letting us know what's going on. Obviously, they're of African descent. Early as 1200 BCE to about 400 BCE. You can see by the features they were of African descent. You can see that. Full lips, wide nose, high cheekbones. Olmex. The first great Mesoamerican civilization, Olmecs appeared to practice ritual bloodletting and played the Mesoamerican ball game. Hallmarks of nearly all subsequent Mesoamerican societies. The Olmec civilization was first defined through artifacts that collectors purchased and considered among ancient America's most striking. Monumental sacred complexes, massive stone sculptures, ball games, chocolate drinking, and animal gods were features of Olmec culture believed to be of African ancestry by African scholars and are heralded as one of the foundations of the book by Ivan Van Sertima entitled, They Came Before Columbus. The distinctly African features of a broad nose and thick lips led many to these conclusions. Some say the noses and lips are thick because of dull tools. However, they have impeccable eyelids and hair. If one can carve an eyelid, then why not a narrow nose? UrbanIntellectuals.com Black Wall Street They fell on the ground So obviously they want their presence known Greenwood suburb of Tulsa Oklahoma 1906 To 1921 UrbanIntellectuals.com Probably about 20 years before I was born One of the most successful black economies in American history. O.W. Gurley, a, wealth Af a wealthy African-American from Arkansas, moved to Tulsa, purchased over 40 acres of land, and sold to other African-Americans in 1906. During oil boom of the 1910s, areas of northeast Oklahoma around Tulsa flourished. Tulsa race riot of 1921, a two-day massacre of hundreds of black residents started by a white mob two-day massacre of hundreds of black residents started by a white mob. Over 800 people admitted to area hospitals. Estimated 10,000 homeless, 35 city blocks housing, 1,256 residences destroyed, and 600 unsuccessful businesses lost. The community mobilized its resources and rebuilt the Greenwood area with five years of the race not in spite of political efforts to prevent reconstruction. So this city was destroyed, unfortunately, by a, a mob of white males. So those of you that think black people do are lazy, that do not want to prosper, uh, we have had our foot, our neck being held down, you know, rest in peace, George Floyd literally and figuratively for so long that we continue to be brought down every time we rise up and eventually you stop trying. This is why you see many homeless blacks. Okay, the epigenetic ancestral DNA is still stuck in them of the trauma of wanting to rise and being brought down over and over and over again and uh, that epigenetic knowing of, you know, the higher we rise, we'll either be killed or 
you know, have a foot put on our neck like George. Either way, it's going to be either fast or slow death. Many of us give up. And I'm looking for you white Americans and people across the world that believe that black life matters are important and that we should not be treated in this way inhumanely when actually we are all connected cosmically I need you guys to step up and do something for justice, for equality for harmony and balance for our planet and for our universal Father, Mother, God I need you to do something because this is why we have nothing we, we can't they won't let us have anything so the next time you see a homeless black person or a black person struggling, understand it's not because we don't want anything. We want much. But we're always blocked, stopped, sometimes by our own. So rethink and have compassion towards African Americans. We've been through much. And we need deep healing and reprogramming of our consciousness. Okay? That's all I have for you. This is Sister Toffee, founder of the Comedic Science Channel, The Net to Ruin You, Power of God's Nature and Your Spirit, where we talk about the power of God within you. And the messages from the divine and the ancestors that wishes for humanity to wake up. There's a clarion call for us to bring balance and universal order to our world so that the energy that we hold can raise the frequency of Mother Gaia, our planet, we all live on her. We all benefit from her energy and her goods, as well as the surrounding elements of fire, water, air, and earth provided by our Heavenly Father, Mother God. We need to be grateful, grateful enough to enact this new way of living in divine universal consciousness to bring our order, harmony, peace, balance, and love back to our planet. Love divine. Okay? I will speak with you at this appointed time, and I hope you have a great weekend. Tomorrow's Friday, and uh, hopefully I'll speak with you again soon whenever Spirit gives me guidance to do so. Take care. I love you guys. And remember, again, this life is a game. Not a game to be played, but a game to be mastered. Okay? You need to learn the rules. Okay? You need to play according to your chart composition, okay? There's already a template lying deep within your cosmic DNA and in your Akashic records. You need to tap into your spiritual self, your ka, and call on your ancestors and guides and your, your understanding of God in order to be able to enact and activate your divine soul contract, okay? I have services on my page. I'm sorry, services page on my home page. You can actually download the chart, which should help. Nets or correlations. Any services that you may be interested in, you can find with the services tab. I do not know for sure if my booking tab works. I'll check and make sure it does. If it doesn't, then uh, I'll, I'll get it started maybe within the next month. If not, you are welcome to contact me at selfmastery at kmsc.online. And I will be honored to help to cultivate the God within you. Okay, that is my desire, that is my joy, and uh, every soul that wakes up to the divinity within is, is, it's bliss for me. I will be happy, okay? Race is not an issue here, okay? All races need healing. Every human being on the planet needs healing. The divine masculine and feminine, global divine masculine and feminine needs healing, period. We need healing. We need healing. We need healing. And it's going to take us working within self and together to make this happen. Aren't you tired of living in a world of fighting and toxicity? If we heal, there will not be a need for fighting. Okay? And it starts with yourself. Sister Toffee, signing out, and I'll speak with you at the divine appointed time. I love you guys. Okay? Take care and enjoy your weekend.